Today, I'm gonna to show you how to properly use color spaces in Photoshop as well as in Lightroom. Hey there and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me on flurn.com where we make learning fun. And in today's episode, we're talking all about color space in Photoshop. Now, there are a lot of nitty gritty little things going on when it comes to color in Photoshop. So we're gonna start with some background information behind color spaces, why they're important, why we have different color spaces. Then we're gonna go into actually opening an image in Adobe Camera Raw and choosing our proper color spaces. And we're gonna go into the color settings within Photoshop and Lightroom so you know which settings you should actually be using for your images. So starting off with some background information behind color spaces, the whole idea is that your eyes can capture a ton of colors. Between two and eight million colors is the modern estimate. Now, a mathematical equation captures all of the colors that we could possibly see, and that's called the LAB model, lightness A and B. Now, from this model, we're able to dictate smaller color profiles that are gonna be really good for different devices. Some of these profiles you may have heard of are sRGB, Adobe RGB 1998, ProPhoto RGB, and there are a bunch of other ones. So why do we have these different color profiles and which ones should we choose when we're editing our images? The different color profiles exist for different devices. So let's just talk about them quickly. The smallest one is called sRGB. This contains the smallest amount of colors. And this is the color profile that apps and web browsers and a lot of devices use to display color. Now, why would all these devices and the internet display color using the smallest color profile? The whole reason is because there are limitations within different devices. You know, your phone versus a tablet that was made 10 years ago versus a computer screen, they all can display different amounts of color. So if you want them to be able to display colors consistently, you have to choose a color profile that's smaller using less colors so that all those different devices can properly display all of those different colors. So that's why sRGB is kind of the standard when it comes to exporting your images out. And when you put an image on the web, you should always put it on sRGB because this is what color spaces the web uses to read colors. So it's the smallest color space, but it's also the most common color space. So we have sRGB, which is the small one, Adobe RGB 1998, which is right there in the middle, and ProPhoto RGB, which is larger. Now, these are just the main ones that photographers and editors are going to be using when it comes to working in Photoshop. So with a few different color spaces, which ones should you use? Well, the answer is a little bit complicated. When you're editing an image, that is, you're gonna adjust your white balance, maybe your colors a little bit, your lights and your darks, you always wanna start with the most amount of information possible because editing is actually like you're basically compressing and manipulating that data. So the more data you have, the better your results are going to be. So if you plan on doing a like a really fine edit of a photo, it's best to start with a color space that is larger like ProPhoto RGB, especially if you're working with saturated colors because from sRGB to Adobe RGB to ProPhoto RGB, the biggest difference you're gonna see is in the highly saturated colors. Less saturated colors are pretty much in all of the color spaces. So if you're working on a very saturated image or if you plan on doing a lot of editing, I highly recommend starting in ProPhoto RGB. But here's where it gets a little bit complicated. When it's time to export those images out for the web, web browsers do not read ProPhoto RGB. They don't read Adobe RGB 1998 either. They only read sRGB. So even if you edit your image in ProPhoto RGB using the most information possible, when it's time to get that image onto the internet, you should use sRGB to make your colors display well across devices. So that's a little background information. Now let's go ahead and get into Photoshop where we can show you how to set up your color preferences and dispel some of the myths when it comes to setting up your colors in Photoshop. So here in Photoshop, we're gonna go to edit and down to color settings. And here we have the color settings of our working spaces, some color management policies, and some conversion options. 
So at the very start, let's just go over what I recommend you use, and then we'll kind of talk about and explain some of these things. So at the start, your working space is RGB. I suggest using sRGB. Here in our color management policies, I always recommend saying preserve embedded profiles, super, super important. And here at the bottom, check all three of these boxes, ask when opening, ask when paint pasting, and ask when opening for missing profiles. Okay, our conversion options, this is how uh, color profiles will be converted. Use Adobe ACE, that's the best color profile. And intent, use relative color metric, that's also the best one. And everything else I just recommend keeping checked just as it is default. So now let's explain what all these things mean, starting with working spaces. Now, it seems like working spaces would be like Photoshop, right? Like the Photoshop workspace would be in this color mode. That's actually not the case. What working spaces means is that if you bring an image into Photoshop that does not have a color profile assigned to it, and this is so complicated, it's crazy, and you do not have these three checked, okay? So if you bring an image in that doesn't have a color profile and you don't have either of these checked, then it will automatically assign the color profile that you choose here. Now, when would that ever happen? Really, the only cases that happening is if you find an image on the internet that was not saved properly, in other words, it's missing its color profile, and you bring that into Photoshop, then it does not have a color profile, but here on the bottom, you can say for a missing profile, ask which color space you'd like to choose. Okay, so you can always choose that there. But if this is unchecked, if these are all unchecked, then that image with a missing color profile would be assigned whatever option you choose here in your working spaces. That's gonna happen almost none of the time. So here, we'll just leave that as sRGB. That does not mean Photoshop is sRGB, okay? It just means that if you're bringing an image in that doesn't have a color profile and you don't have these checked, which I do recommend checking those, that'll convert it to sRGB. Okay, next we have our color management policies. Uh, this is super important, okay? Preserve embedded profiles. The reason this is important, if you bring an image into Photoshop and it's already in sRGB, it's just gonna edit it in sRGB. If you bring in an image that has a ProPhoto RGB color profile assigned to it, then it's gonna edit it in ProPhoto RGB. So Photoshop will read the color profile assigned with any image and then just edit that image in that color profile. So that's why it's saying preserve embedded profiles. These are all from the images themselves, okay? So Photoshop doesn't have its own color profile. That, that's not a thing. It's gonna read the color profiles from your images and then edit those color profiles from the images in Photoshop. And then here on the bottom where it says profile mismatches, so for instance, if I try to take an sRGB image and then copy it and try to paste it into a ProPhoto RGB, that's a profile mismatch, right? So what you wanna do, just make sure to ask when opening, ask when pasting, because you'll wanna convert that. Whenever you're gonna take something from a different color profile and try to put them all together, you just wanna convert and you can do that while you're actually pasting. And then here on the bottom where it says missing profiles, ask when opening, yeah, if you bring an image that doesn't have a color profile in it, I wanna know that, and then I want the option of what I'm going to choose to convert it to. And most of the case, you just want that to be sRGB anyway, because really the only time you're not gonna get an image with a color profile is when you're just gonna be pulling an improperly saved image off the internet. So that's a lot of background information, and as long as you got your settings the same as what I've got on my screen right now, you're good to go. So what have we learned by now? We've learned that we can see a ton of colors, but devices cannot display that many colors, so we have different color profiles that display less colors. But those color profiles are actually assigned on an image by image basis. So for instance, on your camera, you can choose the different color profiles in which you'd like to capture your images. That's only important for JPEGs, by the way. You probably will have the option for sRGB and Adobe RGB 1998. If you are taking raw images, which I highly suggest you do so, you can actually choose your color profile after the fact. So let's go ahead and show you how to properly import a photo into Photoshop using Adobe Camera Raw and how to choose your color profile. 
Here we are back in Photoshop. We're just gonna open up this image and you can actually download this image on flurn.com so you can follow along with me. This is an image I took at the beach recently in Mexico. So let's go ahead and open this up. Now this is a DNG, this is a raw image here, which by default does not have a color profile assigned to it. So how do we assign a color profile to this image? Well, all we have to do is go right down here to the very bottom. These settings are actually super important. They're hidden way at the bottom, which is uh, put them at the top, Adobe. Anyway, they're at the bottom. They're very important. Let's go ahead and click there. It's not even obvious you can click there. Here's where we can set our color profile for our image. So our color space, here's where you're gonna choose the color space for your image. And again, Adobe RGB, this was standard in 1998. Here we are in 2018 at the time of this recording. So Profoto RGB is just gonna express more colors, especially those saturated colors. So we're gonna choose Profoto RGB. Your depth, you wanna choose as 16 bits per channel. Again, this is a raw image. And here in Photoshop, we wanna choose open in Photoshop as smart objects. So let's hit okay. There we go. We're gonna open our object and now there we go. It's gonna say it has an embedded color profile that does not match the current RGB working space. Yep, we know that. Use the embedded profile instead of the working space. That's what we wanna do, right? Because we don't wanna use, we don't wanna convert this to an sRGB right now. We wanna use the embedded profile of the image. So let's hit okay. There we go. And here we have our image. Now this is in Profoto RGB. And if you wanna check the color space of your image at any time, you just go to edit and down here to convert to profile. We're not gonna do anything in here. It just tells you the profile of your image is in Profoto RGB. And then here you can convert it later if you'd like to do that. Now let's say we wanna go ahead and save this out for the web. As we mentioned earlier, you don't wanna save this for the web at Profoto RGB because web browsers use sRGB to read colors. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit smaller. We'll just go to image size and say, I'm gonna make this 600 pixels wide. There we go, that's beautiful. <laughs> Perfect image for the web. Now we're gonna go to file, we're gonna go down to export and over here to save for web. And in the save for web dialog, check this out. It says convert to sRGB because it knows if you're gonna put it on the web, gotta put it on the web in sRGB because that's the color space the web browsers use. This is what I suggest doing, going to the save for web dialog, and here you're gonna see it's gonna take the original color profile of Protophoto RGB, it's gonna convert it to sRGB when we export, and then all you have to do is hit save, go ahead and save it out wherever you want, and you're good to go. Now we got one more thing to keep in mind. If you're gonna be bringing your images in from Lightroom into Photoshop, how do you make sure you're using the proper color space there? Well, here we go, we've got the same image here in Lightroom. I'm gonna to go to my Lightroom menu and down to preferences, and we're gonna take a look at external editing. So external editing, I'm gonna be using Adobe Photoshop CC 2019. We can choose our format here, our color space. See, here's our color space. I'm gonna choose Profoto RGB and our bit depth, I'm gonna choose as 16 bits. So there we go. Now if I right click on my photo and I go to edit in Photoshop CC 2019, I'm gonna be skipping the Adobe Camera Raw dialog in Photoshop, but that's okay. See, it's still gonna ask me embedded profile mismatch, but that's okay because we wanna use the one in the image itself. So we'll hit okay. There we go. And now here's our image. We'll go to edit down to convert profile, just to check. I'm actually actually convert it, but you can see my, prof my profile is in Profoto RGB. So now we are working in the proper color space and we've shown you how to do that, bringing your images directly into Photoshop as well as going in through Lightroom. And what about if we're exporting directly from Lightroom? All you have to do is right click on an image or a set of images, go down to export, there we are. And here in your file settings, you're gonna choose JPEG and your color space again sRGB because that's the perfect color space for display on the web and most devices, sRGB. You can choose your quality and then hit export. So very similar to the export dialog we showed you in Photoshop. Well, that's how we properly work with our color spaces in both Photoshop and Lightroom. So 
What are the big takeaways? Basically, your eyes are amazing. They can capture a ton of colors and most devices can't capture anywhere near that amount of colors. Different devices are able to capture and display different amounts of color. So we have smaller color profiles so those colors can properly display or be captured on different devices. When you're editing your images, I highly suggest using ProPhoto RGB. And when it's time to export your images, sRGB is going to be the best color space because it's going to render properly on the web. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed this, give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button on your screen. We'll send you free tutorials every single week. Thanks again, and I'll learn you later. Bye everyone.